just you always want to challenge yourself against the best. You know, I, I, after the Mikey fight and, uh, you know, the Porter fight, you know, I saw some holes in his game and I felt like, you know, it's a good opportunity for me to, you know, become champion again. So, and he's, you know, he's a great champion. I'm a great champion. And I feel like these type of fights bring out the best in Danny Garcia. You know, they make me run the extra mile. They make me spar the extra round. They make me eat the right meals. And they gave me the extra motivation I need. And I feel like this is the type of fight that's going to bring out the best in me. And that's why I want it. Hmm? Thank you so much. Carol, best of luck to you as well. All right, thanks, Jake. Our next question is going to come from Jander LaBeouf. Jander, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Thank you. Um, my first question is for Errol. When you, you're a fight fan as well as a fighter, when you look at a fighter like Danny, do you learn more from his wins or do you learn more about him from his losses? Definitely learn more from, from the wins. I mean, like I said, he has a lot of great wins, a lot of great victories, and I mean, you learn a lot from just, just, just different fights. Some losses and some wins. wins. Maybe you keep down and out for the fight. fight. Well, you learn from all the fights in the past, past too. too. Like, I mean, I'm a lot of people and things like that. So, I mean, uh, I don't really have to watch those fights because, I mean, I'm a student of the game. I'm a fan of the sport. So that's all I do anyway is watch boxing. So I didn't, I didn't watch Danny Garcia see like that. Okay, thank you. And Danny, a question for you. Um, Angel mentioned earlier that he thought Mikey Garcia ran the whole fight against Spence. When you look at Spence in that fight, what do you think he was most effective at and what he did well in that fight? You know, I felt like he was the, he was the bigger, uh, better man that night. I felt like, you know, Mikey has great skill, but I think the size difference and he just let his hands go and he, Mikey didn't have an answer. So Mikey kind of froze. Um, and he just, he just won every round, you know, let, just by letting his hands go, you know, Mikey didn't take no risk, but, um, you know, Mikey did some good things in there. He held his ground well, well, um, he landed some good counter punches and, um, and those are things that, that I'm taking, um, into consideration, you know, for this camp. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck to both of you. Andrew, next question. Andrew, any more questions? What the heck did happen? Oh my God. Well, why are we go ahead and oh, do that? Sorry uh, about that. Sorry about that, guys. Ben, baby, our next question will come from you if you want to unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah, for sure. Errol and, uh, and Errol, can y'all hear me okay? Awesome. Yes, hey, we can. Fire away. Awesome. Hey, Errol, you know, quick question. I think all of us know about the accident, kind of what occurred. In, in some way, was, was that a real wake-up call for you and kind of what, you know, you needed to do in and out of the ring? I mean, how did that kind of affect you moving forward? Uh, after you had the accident and everything that happened? Um, I mean, it really didn't do nothing. It just made me more focused, uh, made me hungrier, and gave me the same hunger that I had, you know, before I won the world title. And so um, it just made me more focused, more hungry, made sure I kept my weight down. And, you know, basically, before I was probably coming to, coming to camp, you know, when it was just a training camp and I had a fight lined up. But now I'm actually, you know, training year round and you know making it a priority more than just you know okay i gotta fight now i gotta start training now i'm training ahead of time instead of just waiting to the last minute awesome thanks man appreciate you all right thanks ben our next question will come from carlos toro carlos you can unmute yourself and ask a question hi gentlemen thanks so much for taking time to talk to us you know first question to errol you know Obviously, you know, you're, you're back in the fold, you're training and everything, but how did it feel just getting into that first sparring session, that first gym session after the accident and preparing for the fight? How did it feel to you just kind of getting back to the fold, you know, physically and mentally? 
Um, at first, the first time I sparred, it felt it felt kind of weird. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I feel real weird. But um, at the probably like the third or fourth, you know, sparring session, everything was just clicking, and now I'm just I'm sharp as a tag now. So you know, everything's back to normal. Um, you know, I, I feel like I wouldn't have no ring rust at all come December fifth. Hey, hey, quick, quick, uh, quick, Derek. How did Errol? How has Errol looked so far in this training camp? Kind of after that initial phase where he was just trying to just get back into the rhythm of th things. When he was getting back to the rhythm and finding himself in the ring, he still was looking good. But I think it was the level of comfort that came in that made the difference. I mean, so it's like uh, he still looked good from the first day he sparred to each day after that. But when I think when you get more comfortable with um, just being back in the ring, being back home or whatever, it's uh, you can see a difference. It looks amazing. It looks good. You know, everybody will see on December 5th, but, you know, what who he really is. One quick question to Danny. You know, Danny, I know Angel was talking about the, the fact that, you know, bringing in world judges and not local judges And you've had the two very close losses on the scorecards to Sean Porter and to Keith Thurman. Do you kind of look at this fight against Errol and believe that there is a sense of urgency or more pressure to kind of take the fight out of the judges' hands, even, you know, with trying to bring in uh, different judges to try to make the fight as fair as possible? Do you feel like a knockout is more, more of a priority this time around? You know, my job is to fight. At the end of the day, my job is to fight. I can't go in there and worry about judges you know the judges are going to do what they do they're going to score the fight my job is to put 110 in the gym and know that when i go in there come fight night i'll be ready you know that's my job my job is to fight and win rounds and win fights um the judges are not in my mind you know i can't worry about that that's just a that's just a distraction so at the end of the day i'm worried about danny garcia being ready and going in there handling my business and that's the only thing i know how to do they make me Right thanks, team. gentlemen. Best of luck to the both of you. Come fight night. You know, they make me run that. All right, thanks, Carlos. Our next question will come from Marcos Villegas. Marcos, please unmute yourself and you can ask why. Hello, Danny. Hello, Angel, Derek, and uh, Errol. Hope uh, you guys have all been well. I'm going to ask uh, both Errol and Danny uh, this question. Um, and Danny, you can answer first. Um, when you look at this matchup, like, honestly, like, why do you feel you can win this? Like, what, what do you see there in your own game that will give you the decision or the knockout win in this fight? And, and that same question goes to Errol. You know, I feel like, I feel like I'm a great fighter. You know, I'm a great fighter. And, uh, you know, I've been in these type of fights before. These type of fights motivate me. You know, I know what, I know what I'm built of. I know what I'm built of. As long as I give 100% in the gym and me stay mentally and physically round. ready, I know no one can beat me. Right meals and uh, me when Danny Garcia is focused like that, I know he's a dangerous man. And I believe I can beat anybody in the sport. Errol, can I get um, your thoughts as to why you think uh, you will win this fight or, or that something that you possess that you feel that Danny won't be able to handle the night of the fight? Uh, I just feel like I'm the champ and... At the end of the day, I'm just a, I'm just a fighting motherfucker. It doesn't matter. If it's inside, outside, I can just fight. So I just feel like if it, if it gets down to the wire and we got to lock it up, I feel like I'm going to come out on top because I'm not dig down deep and I'm not just fight. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, Marcos. Our next question is going to come from John Cudney. John, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey guys, so this is a question first for Errol and uh, Derek. Uh, the country has been going through a long series of like lockdowns. COVID-19 has been um, awful. Just uh, wondering what it means to you guys to fight in front of a live crowd at Cowboy Stadium for this fight. To me, it means, you know, it means everything. Just fighting at home and, you know, everything that everybody's been going through right now. And, um, You know, I just wish everybody that's, that's going to come out, you know, be safe, wear your mask, you know, have, you know, follow the social distancing protocols and things like that. And I feel like it'll be a smooth night. Fight at home and be at home and fight a great fighter like this. 
and, and, you know, put on a great performance is, is, is amazing because I think that it only builds a legend. It only builds your stock. And, and to be able to perform at a home in front of a live audience is very uh, difficult to do. But at the same time, as for other people who are difficult for them because L's been able to perform and do well in front of the audience, and we love that. So we love the energy. We love uh, everything that the city brings us, from people from all over the world to everybody in Dallas. We love the energy. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Those are great answers. Okay, uh, questions for uh, Danny and Angel. So um, I'm going to ask a cynical question, but I'm interested to hear your honest answer. So you guys had already agreed to this fight, you know, as Jake mentioned earlier, but you know, how are you approaching this now that Errol has been through the car accident? Does it give you potentially, you know, extra confidence for a different approach knowing he might've lost some speed off this fastball? Now nah, we're taking this, we're taking this fight, you know, he's a, he's a champion. So we're taking this fight hundred percent serious. We're not, we're not banking on no, you know, car accident or, or layoff and all those type of things. Um, we're taking this 100% serious. Like I said before, we we wanted this fight on January 25th. You know, things happen. Then the COVID happened, so we just had to stay um, focused. And you know, the world had to weather the COVID storm and all the crazy things that things is going on in the world. But now the fight's finally here. You know, we're three and a half weeks away, and you know, I feel like camp is going great, and we're going to go in there and have great performance. You, you gotta Angel, understand. any thoughts? Yeah. yeah. You got to understand, like Danny said, it, it was, uh, for January when we for a red car, I mean, red catch, was supposed to be uh, spent, but then he got into that tragedy. But that's the past. So we're not looking at the accident because we're not doctors. He's clear by medical. His team say he's good. Everybody else saying he's good. To us, he's good. We can't worry about that. That's something that it doesn't make the fight better or worse. We're not gonna we're not gonna go in there thinking that he was in a car accident that we got the advantage. We're not falling for that booby trap. That's a booby trap. All we know that we going and, and uh, for the COVID too. The reason we chose uh, Dallas, Texas, because uh, they got fans, so we wanted fans. If not, it would have been somewhere else. You know, and, and as long as like like as long as the people follow protocol. And you know, not that I'm saying that it's not real, it's epidemic, all they give you is a fever for 10 days, not like it's gonna kill you. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how the country is shut down over a fever. But we've been through worse in the past, so <laughs> it's not the first time America have had a, 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 a virus. Okay, so like, as long as you follow protocol, you wear your little mask or whatever you wanna wear, then you're good. But we're not worrying about that. We, we, we hopeless against protocol, we hopeless against masks, all we know is December 5th, we're going to go to Dallas. We're going to fight Spence and Danny. We're going to fight, and we're coming home victorious. That's all we got to worry about. Everything else is pushed to the side. It don't mean nothing to us. Like, it don't mean nothing. I, I, I had cancer. I had an accident. I had a motorcycle accident, and I'm here. So as long as you get medical clearance from a doctor, we ain't going over there thinking he, got a, he had an accident. We're going to go in there. And smack him around, he's done. You know, we gotta respect him, he's a champ. So we're going in there, we're gonna fight. And we're gonna fight December 5th, and we're gonna have a great fight. And at the end of that night, and now new. And that's how it's gonna work out. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Great answers. Thank you. All right, yep, thanks, John. We're gonna have just a couple more media ask questions here. Our next question is gonna come from LA Secbag. Ellie, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Hey guys, great to see. You. I'm so excited about this fight. It's one of the biggest fight this year. What for both Danny and for Earl? What do you guys do great, and what does your opponent do great? You want me to go first? Yeah, you go. Yeah. Yeah, I, I you know I feel like I, I do everything great. You know, at the end of the day, I feel like I'm a true champion. I make adjustments. You know, I can bang it out. I can box. Um, I feel like I can use my jab. And, you know, I, I feel like that's why I'm a three-time world champion because, you know, I face many styles, southpaws, bangers, boxers, sluggers, been the underdog, and, you know, I came out on top. So I feel like these are the type of fights that, that bring out the best of me.
Well, Thanks, like Danny Earl. Things Danny do great is, you know, um, he counter punches well. Um, got nice, sharp, short hooks. You know, something can be wild, but it's still strong and, you know, his heart. Um, you know, has a great chin. You know, the guy that's not, you know, is willing to get hit and still come back with his shot, too. So, I mean, like I said, great counter puncher. The guy that always, you know, when he is the underdog, he always rides to the, to the occasion, at least at 140 pounds. So, um, you know, with me, I feel like I do a lot of things great. You know, I feel like I can box. I feel like I can bang. You know, I feel like, you know, I can do it all. So it's not just one thing I can just point out that I do great. Thank you. And, and then one more question. What makes your trainers, the both fighters, what makes your trainers so great? You know, I feel what makes my um, my trainer so great. You know, he believes in me 110. percent You know, a lot of a lot of trainers are great trainers, but the, mentally they're not there for you. And I feel like pops, you know, he he trains you hard, but he makes you believe in yourself. And I think that's that's the most important thing in and out the ring. Well, for me, I feel like my coach is very detailed. Um, you know, always paying attention to the little things. So. You know, even if I'm doing something right, you know, he'll still, you know, put it in my brain and still tell me, hey, keep your hands up or throw your jab or do this and do that. So with him, I feel like it's the details. You know, he's always looking for something. You know, it's never anything perfect for him. You know, everything has flaws in it, everything you can learn from. So, you know, with him, it's just, you know, just details, very, very detailed coach. All right, Thank thanks, you so much. Yep. Our last question is going to come from Cam Buford. Cam, if you want to unmute your mic, you can go ahead and ask your question. Hey, guys, thanks for making time. I look forward to this fight. Uh, Coach James, my question for you is, going when Earl was became healthy again after the accident, did you? What was that process that you took him through to kind of get him ready for for physical training or um, training for a fight, not this fight in particular, just fight, a fight period? Did you take it easy on him and just talk to us about that process, please? Well, it was just so perfect. I mean, even though you have the, the ideal of his mind in your mind, the last time you trained him was on a high level. You have to come in and kind of like uh, put the training wheels on. It's a gradual process. The gradual process. I mean. And so by the time that this camp started, he was already in shape. He had been training for like three months, four months, maybe longer than that. So it was like, um, it was the process of just, we could, we, could, we could mess around with some things and do some things and then start perfecting some other things. So we had long enough time to do it. And uh, that's great because, you know, it was beautiful. And like you said, the two more weeks only help to two more weeks to get better, to, to, to you know just be great. I got it. Thank you. And and Earl, uh, they when they look at this fight with Mikey, they they touched on the fight and said he found some uh, opportunities in that fight. What are they missing from that fight about your fight game that if they just focus on that one fight, they'll be overlooking? Oh, I don't know. I made that fight look easy. Well, it was easy. I had sparring harder than that, so I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think you can learn anything from that fight, really. Well, there's always something to learn, but I mean, that fight was so easy that, you know, sometimes I got no focus. No, well, I wasn't saying, well, what did you learn? I was saying, if they, uh, the Garcias focus on that fight, what would they be missing if they just focus on that fight? real question. Fucking idiot. Nobody focusing on that fight. Okay. Well, you just said we well, ain't learned nothing from that. It was you okay. here or not. You're an idiot. Well, I, he said he didn't watch the fight. He didn't watch the fight. He, he said he perfects Danny. Danny. Real question, you moron. Not, you know. <laughs> Fucking moron. Dan Danny, Danny, um, you going into this fight and your pops is over there fired up, said you can you can bring anything right, to the table. Okay, listen, man. Don't even ask that. Get this idiot out of there, man. Bang him, man. Hang up. He's an idiot. All right. That'll be it for the media questions today. You're Ray, we'll turn idiot, it back dude. over to you to wrap Thought up. You the one that Thank you very much, Andrew. Don't great great you. Always talking shit. 
Greatly appreciated. Hey, Angel and, and Danny, I want to get oh, from man, Danny as we go ahead and we... Listen, man, I hate any of your writers. They're the ones that well, write all will... this bull crap about all these fighters, but they never had, they never got clipped in the tip of the nose. They act like they know these fighters. They don't know these fighters. They got to ask real questions. Was he listening? I say that we didn't learn nothing from that fight. Oh, he talking about we learned from what? What we learned from that? That was easy money for Spence. I would have took that money too. We wanted that fight. <laughs> what the fuck? Daddy, can you give us your final comments easy as you money. get ready to collide against Errol Spence Jr. December 5th on a PBC Fox Sports pay-per-view. Your opportunity to capture both the WBC and the IBF welterweight championship of the world. You know, I'm very excited, you know, to be back on the stage and fighting for another world title. And uh, come December 5th, you know, I'm not leaving no rock on turn. We're, put, we're about to work right now after this. We're putting the work hard work in every day. It's been a long camp, a great camp. And um, we feel great. We feel confident. We can't wait to December 5th. Thank you very much, Danny and Angel. We greatly appreciate it. Now for Errol Spence Jr., once again, another opportunity to defend your world championships at home. AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, the home of your favorite football team, the Dallas Cowboys. What can we expect on December 5th against Danny Garcia? Well, you can expect an action-packed fight. If you know Danny Garcia, you've seen his fights. He's always in exciting action-packed fights. I'm always in exciting action fight, action-packed fights. So, I mean, I think our style is going to clash, and it's going to be a you know historic night come December 5th. So I can't wait. You know, I know he's been training hard. I know he's 100% focused. I've been training hard. I'm 100% focused. And we're willing to put on the great show from December 5th. Thank you very much to Errol Spence and Danny Garcia. Don't miss it. December 5th on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view. All brought to you by TGB Promotions, Man Down Promotions, and DSG Promotions. The lead-up continues. Errol Spence Jr. and Danny Garcia, welterweight supremacy on the line. On December 5th at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, limited tickets are available following COVID protocols. You can get them at SeatGeek.com or for the rest of the world, watch it on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view on December 5th, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific time. Have a great one, everyone, and we'll see you during fight week in the Dallas area. Have a great one. Thanks, Ray. Hey, can we do one shot, you guys? I'd just like a shot of the two fighters in the camera so if the trainers could step out. Take your chair with you. We'll get one, two shot of both fighters so we can get a, anybody can take the video. We'll have the video on record. There we go. Spence, can you, Errol, can you move your chair over just a little bit? In the center. Thank you so much, guys. And then we, then we, yeah, excellent. Okay, everybody take any photos you want off the screen. Okay, thanks guys. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you.